Now we'll be looking at the practical applications of maximum and minimum. Just a quick reminder, maximum and minimum, they represent stationary values. Let's begin with a question. It says, in the right angled triangle ABC, the lengths AB and BC vary such that their sum is always 6 cm. If AB is 6 cm, write down the length of BC in terms of X. Now, the question said that no matter the length of AB and BC, their sum is always going to be 6 cm. When we add those lengths, we will always get 6 cm. Now we were given the length of AB as X centimeter. So therefore, for the length of BC, it will an expression will be six minus the length of AB, which is six minus X. The second part of the question was to find the maximum area of the triangle. Now, the formula to find the area of a triangle is half base times height. And I'm going to substitute the appropriate expressions. So half times the base, which was BC, whose expression is six minus X, times the height, which is AB, whose expression is X. Now when we expand, six times X is six X, minus x times x is minus x squared. So here for our area expression, we have 6x minus x squared over 2, which can also be written as 3x minus x squared over 2 if we give each of these um, the denominator 2, meaning 6x over 2 is 3x, and this is x squared over 2. And here we have another way of writing that. The question requires for us to find the maximum area of the triangle. So we, the keyword here is maximum. So we are obviously going to differentiate that area function, then equate it to zero. Now, this is our area function. And when we differentiate it, we'll end up with three minus x as you see here. So when we equate it to 0, we end up with x is equal to 3. We can now test to see if it's an actual maximum with either the first or second derivative test. I chose to use the second derivative test. So when I go ahead and differentiate this gradient function, I'm left with a negative 1. And you were taught that if the second derivative is less than zero or negative, it is a maximum. So therefore, when x is equal to three, the area is at a maximum. Now we can find that area by plugging three in place of x in our area function. You can use either of these. So we'll end up with three times three, nine, minus 3 squared over 2, or 9 over 2, which is 4.5. So 9 minus 4.5 makes our area, our maximum area, 4.5 centimeter squared. For our second example, the question states, a certain car can travel y miles when it travels at a speed of x miles per hour on each gallon of petrol, where y is equal to 15 plus x minus x squared over 110. At what speed should the car travel to cover the maximum distance on a single tank of petrol? Now, as we approach any math question, we write down what we know and work from there. The question wants the maximum distance that the car can travel on a single tank. So what we do know is that the y, which is the miles, 
that can be traveled is equal to 15 plus x minus x squared over 10. When we differentiate that, we'll end up with 1 minus 1 over 55 x, as you see here. Since we are asked to find the maximum distance, we now equate our derivative to zero. When we do that, this negative x over 55 can come over as a positive. And so to find the value of x, this comes up and gets multiplied. So the speed at which our car can travel to cover the maximum distance on a single tank of petrol is 55 miles per hour. Up here is where I tested to see if um, it was in fact a maximum, which when we differentiate this to get our second derivative, we do get a negative number, so it was. For our first question, it says, a profit y dollars generated from the sale of x items is given by that function. Part A. How many items should be sold to obtain the maximum profit? Here we have our y function, and if we differentiate it, we get dy dx equals 600 plus 30x minus 3x squared. Now we will equate that gradient function to zero to find the maximum. What I did first was um, rearrange it into the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So I brought this over. It became, I brought this on the other side. It became a 3x squared. This became a negative 30x and this a negative 600, which I equate to zero. Now, when we solve this quadratic, 3 times negative 600 is negative 1800. And the factors to give us 30 and negative 30 are negative 60 and positive 30. So that's what I put in place of my 30x. Negative 30x and, sorry, a positive 30x and a negative 60x. When I separated, 33x is common and is factored out and left with x plus 10. Over here, I have to factor out a negative 60 to be left with x plus 10 once more in bracket. So these are our roots which we equate to 0, 3x minus 60 and x plus 10. From here, x will be equal to 20 because our negative 60 comes over as a positive 60 and the three that's been multiplied comes over as divide. So we have 60 over three, which is 20. And here the positive 10 simply comes over as a negative. We'll now test to see which one of these X values will make it a maximum. By finding the second derivative from this function, we end up with 30 minus six X. And each value is plugged into that d into that second derivative function. When 20 is plugged, I end up with negative 90. Right away, we have a negative value for our second derivative. So it is a maximum when x is equal to 20. So by selling 20 items, the profit will be at a maximum. Part B wants us to determine that maximum profit, and we do that by simply plugging 20 in place of x on our y function because y um, represents the dollar amount or the profit. So when we do that, plug 20 in place of x, we have 600 times 20 plus 15 times 20 squared minus 20 cubed, which works out to $10,000 in profit. For our next question, it says, a missile is launched vertically from the ground. At T seconds after being launched, its height, y meters, is given by y equal 15t minus 5t squared. Calculate the time at which the missile reaches its maximum height, then determine that height. 
So from our y function, when we differentiate it, we'll get, we'll get 15 minus 10t, which we will then equate to zero. I brought over my negative 10t as a positive, and then to solve for t, I divide each side by 10. So t is 1.5. You can do either the first or second derivative test to verify if it's a maximum. I did the first right here, but we could easily do the second by differentiating our dy dt, and it will give us a negative 10. And since it's a negative answer, it is in fact a maximum when t time is 1.5 seconds. So we found out that the time that the missile reaches its maximum height is 1.5 seconds. And now that height we can find by simply plugging the 1.5 in place of t as you see here. And that works out to a height of 11.25 meters. For our next question, it says, a window is in the shape of a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle whose diameter is the width of the window. The perimeter is 15, cent is 15 meters. Find the width of the window when the area is a maximum. Now let's work from what we are given. We're given the perimeter which is 15 meters. Perimeter means the distance around, just the outside distance. So we have 2x, a y, an xy, and this semicircle right here. So that's 2x plus 2y. And the circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. So if it's a semicircle, we simply need to have that pi d. As you see here. Now the question did say that the diameter is the width of the window as you can clearly see. So if here is 2x, here is also 2x. So when I half pi d or half pi 2x, I get pi x. So here we have 15 which is the perimeter is equal to 2x plus 2y plus pi x and when we rearrange to make y the subject this 2x comes over as a negative this pi x comes over as a negative as well and this 2 that was being multiplied by the y comes over and gets divided so here is our expression for y the question wants us to find the width of the window when the area is a maximum. So we need an area function. Now, the area will be the sum of this area of the rectangle as well as this area of this semicircle. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So we have y times 2x, which is 2xy and for the semicircle it will be half that of a circle the area of a circle is pi r squared so when we half it as you see here that will be that will represent the semicircle the diameter is 2x and we know that the diameter is two times the radii or um, if we divide the diameter into two we get a radius so for r, we divide 2x by 2 and we will get x. So this expression will be used for the area of the semicircle, pi x squared over 2. We have 2xy plus pi x squared over 2 for area. As you notice, we have two different variables in our function and that's going to be tedious to work with. So what we're going to do is to substitute the expression for y that we found earlier, as you see here. So it's now 2x times y. When we do that, this 2 will cancel with that 2. And we multiply x times 15, 15x, 
x times negative 2x and negative 2x squared and x times negative pi x and negative pi x squared. This comes down as our pi x squared over 2 or half pi x squared. Here is where I grouped to get 15x minus 2x squared and then if we have a minus 1 plus half we end up with a minus half pi x squared. Quick reminder, the, front, the question wants us to find the maximum area. Now that we have our area function, we will differentiate it and equate it to zero. When we differentiate this, we'll get 15 minus 4x minus pi x, as you see here. And we are equating it to zero. What I did here was factor out an x that was common to be left with a negative 4 and a negative pi in bracket. Since we're solving for x, this 15 can come over as a negative, and this that's multiplied by the x comes over and gets divided. When we plug this into the calculator, remember pi is 3.14, when we plug all of this into the calculator, we end up with x equals 2.1 centimeter. We can test if it's in fact a maximum. Here I did the first derivative test and you could have easily differentiated this to get negative 4 minus pi. So it will be a minus 4 minus 3.14. There's a minus 7.14, a negative number. So it is in fact a maximum. Now that we know that the maximum occurs when x is equal to 2.1, we can go and calculate the width of the window. The width is given as 2x. So since we know x is equal to 2.1, 2 times 2.1 makes the width 4.2 centimeters. For our next question, it says a rectangular storage area is to be constructed along the side of a tall building. A security fence is required along the remaining three sides of the area. What is the maximum area that can be enclosed with 800 meters of wire fencing? So here I have a little sketch. This here represents the side of that tall building and this is the remaining three sides that will enclose the area with fencing. So the question wants us to find the maximum area that can be enclosed with 800 meters of fencing. What we know is that all of this needs to be fenced with that wire and that perimeter should add up to 800 meters. So we have x plus x is 2x and y, which is a perimeter, equals 800. And if we express it in terms of y, we'll get 800 minus 2x. Now, since we need the maximum area, we need an area function to differentiate. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So we have x times y. What we, as you see here, we have two separate variables. We substitute the expression we found for x and expand to give us 800x minus 2x squared. So this represents the area function. When we differentiate it, we'll end up with 800 minus 4x and equating it to zero We'll have, we'll have x equals negative 800 divided by negative 4, which is 200 meters. We can test to see if um, this is in fact the maximum. I did the second derivative test. When I differentiate this, I'll end up with negative 4. And since it's a negative number, it is in fact a maximum. So the maximum does occur when x is equal to 200 meters. And now that we know that, we can find that maximum area. 
I plugged 200 in place of x, so 200, 800 minus 2 times 200, or 800 minus 400 is 400 times 200, 80,000 meters squared. So that right there is the maximum area that our fence can enclose. For our last question, it says, a box with a square base has no top. If 64 centimeters squared of material is used, what is the maximum possible volume of the box? I made some quick sketches. So here is the base of the box in the shape of a square. That's, these are the other remaining four sides. We have one, two, three, and four sides and at the top here there's nothing it's um, topless I broke it down so it's simpler to see here is the base and then these are the four sides we know that the area the total area is going to be this base plus these four sides so that's why the base is going to be len times width or x times x is x squared. And then for these, the area is x times y. Since we have four of them, we end up with 4xy. So when we add these, the expression will give the total area of our topless box. That area is made up of 64 centimeters squared of material. So that's why x that so that is why I equated my expression to 64. I will now make y the subject. This x squared comes over as a negative and this 4x that was being multiplied comes over and gets divided. I went ahead and gave each of these the denominator 4x. So we have 64 over 4x and x squared over 4x. And when that's simplified, we're left with 16 over x minus x over 4, which is our expression for y. The question wants the maximum possible volume. Now, since it's a box, since it is a box, the volume of that box is length times width times height. Length times width times height, as you see here, give us, giving us x squared y. I inserted the expression for y and expanded to get 16x squared over x minus x cubed over 4, which simplifies to 16x minus a quarter x cubed. So this is our volume function. So now we can find the maximum volume by differentiating that volume function and equating it to zero. When we differentiate this, we'll end up with 16 minus 3 over 4x squared, as you see here. And when we equate it to zero, what I did, my 16 came over as a negative, and this negative 3 quarter that was being multiplied comes over as a divide. When we divide these, we'll end up with 64 over 3 as our x squared. But since we need x, we'll find the square root of x squared to get x. And anything that's done to one side of an equation needs to be done to the other. So that's why I also found the square root of this side, which works out to positive or negative 8 over root 3. Square root of 64 is 8, and then we put root 3. I went ahead and test to see if it's in fact a maximum and from this our second derivative will be equal to a negative 3 over 2x and the only we had two values a positive and a negative 8 over root 3 and the only value that will make this second derivative a negative is if we plug the positive 8 over root 3. So the maximum value that we'll get has to be when x is 8 over root 3 or 4.62. Now that we know the x value, we can find that volume by plugging it into the volume function. 
so we'll have volume equals x squared times y. I squared my x here, 4.62, and 16 over 4.62 minus 4.62 over 4. That works out when multiplied to approximately 49.3 centimeter cube.